the winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. It's Thursday in the lab room. Took a day off yesterday. Didn't really think that there was enough news to carry this program through. But I'm back today because there's some things that happened after I recorded yesterday. And I saw that, yeah, I could have had a program. But I said, I'll just save it. Talk about it on Thursday. And there's more news today. So we'll have a full plate today. So let's jump right into the program. I thank you for joining me first and foremost on the program today. And there's a lot of moves being made in the NFL. Teams are freeing up cap space now as free agency will be embarking upon us here shortly. And so teams are starting to clear cap space. We start in New York where yesterday the Giants cut ties with Ahmad Bradshaw, most notably Chris Canty and Michael Bowley. Now Michael Bowley was always hurt with the Giants. It seemed like every time he started to play some of his best football, he got injured. And so the Giants figured, hey, we can part ways with this guy. His cap number is too high. Let's go ahead and shed him. And so they got rid of three guys that were contributors on this team for the last two or three seasons. They're gone now. Ahmad Bradshaw was drafted by the New York Giants. And he's a guy that's always injured. He never practices. He's got chronic foot problems. But he always plays. He went over 1,000 yards for the Giants this past season. And so he can still play. He's come out and said that there's still a possibility and the door has been left open for him to return to the Giants. Of course, it would probably be for less money. But nonetheless, he's gone now. Giants have cut ties with those three players. We move next door to the other New York team, the Jets, and they cut ties today with Bart Scott and with Calvin Pace. And really, that's a sign that the Jets are trying to become younger at the linebacker position. Kudos to the Jets for realizing that they need to move on. They're getting long in the tooth. I talked about that when I talked about the Jets on their lap follow-up. They're an old team. They're relatively old on defense, especially. And so guys like Demario Davis will get a chance, get the opportunity to start for this Jets team. And I think they need a new wave of defensive players on that roster. And Calvin Pace and Bart Scott were two of the older elder statesmen of that defense, and they need to move on. So the Jets cut ties with them, and they'll be looking to get younger on the defensive side of the football. You also take a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, they haven't cut anyone yet, but sources are telling me that the Steelers are about to start chopping off a lot of fat, all the trimmings, all the fat around this football team. A lot of guys are getting up there in age. And again, I talked about this in the Steelers for the lab follow-up as well. They're an old team. I and mean, anyone that tries to tell you otherwise does not understand what's going on in Pittsburgh. The Steelers are an old football team. But their old guys still have something left in the tank. At least it seems that way on the outside looking in. But they're making too much money. And so it looks like the Steelers are about to start hacking away at this roster. Because as it stands right now, the Steelers are over the cap. And they have a lot of veterans who are making too much money. And that are going to have such a large cap number in 2013 that they just can't afford to have these guys around. Unless they're going to restructure their deal in a way that is cap friendly for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you look at guys like James Harrison. And even Troy Palomalu, who's going to have a huge cap number, I don't think they're going to cut ties with 
Troy Palomalu. Even though he'll be making over $7 million in 2013, they may ask him to redo that deal, though. James Harrison, however, is a whole separate issue. I think he's getting older. I think he can't stay healthy. I think his best days are behind him. And that $6.2 or $6.5 million cap number that he has, not going to cut it. I think the Steelers are just going to part ways with him. And I think the Steelers are going to do that with several other guys on his roster. We know Casey Hampton is going to be gone. He won't be back with the Steelers in 2013. And you look around that roster, and there's several other guys like a Brett Kiesel that may not be back in 2013. Guys that are going to be making some money. And you got to look around this roster and say, hey, are the Steelers going to be willing to pay all of these guys money if they don't want to redo their deals? They just paid Ike Taylor. But Ike Taylor is a 30-year-old corner. Will the Steelers ask him to take a pay cut? Or will they just say, hey, we've got a lot of young corners on this roster. If you don't want to take a pay cut, you have to go. So we'll see. All this says to me is Mike Wallace will not be back in 2013. Now, all the money and uh, all the holdout and all the issues that they had with him over the last offseason won't occur in 2013. He didn't have a productive season. And they're going to cut ties with Mike Wallace. All of that says that to me. Mike Wallace won't be back for sure in 2013. So those are all interesting storylines to look at for the Pittsburgh Steelers coming up in the upcoming offseason as teams start to shed dead weight. The Lions also said that, hey, we're going to be integral players in the offseason as well. As we have money to burn, they cut ties with Kyle Bandenbosch, Stephen Tullock, and they just cut ties with their very unruly and disruptive and flat-out knucklehead receiver, Titus Young. And so now they have a little bit of space under the cap from which they, they can play with now. And so look for the Lions to be a player. Their GM, Martin Mayu, has already come out and said, hey, we're going to be players in the upcoming offseason in free agency. And we're going to make some moves in the draft. And we're going to be a team that looks to get back to the form that we had in 2011 when they were a playoff team. They don't think that they're indicative of that 2012 season that they just had. They feel like they're a team that is one or two players away. And so they're going to make some moves in the offseason to try to get back to where they were in 2011. So Greg Williams has officially been reinstated in the National Football League. As of today, he's been signed to come on board with the Tennessee Titans in some capacity. He'll probably be a consultant to the defensive side of the football. And he's going to try to help that Tennessee Titans defense improve under Mike Munchak. So welcome back, Greg Williams. I've already talked about this in previous programs that he made a mistake. He paid for his mistake. And he's back in the league. I'm not really going to elaborate much on that. I've already touched on that. I think I've already talked about that in great lengths. And so I don't want to talk about that too much longer. Just welcome back to the league, Greg Williams. I think that he's a fine defensive coordinator. He went overboard. He took it too far. He was talking about injuring guys. I don't know if that's really who he is or not, but he's a really good defensive coordinator. He's a great teacher of football, and I think that he'll be fine. This thing will blow over, and he'll be back to being a coordinator here shortly. I think he just needs one more season away from the limelight. And then I think he can enter back in as a defensive coordinator next season. And I already said that, and I believe that. And I think that's what will happen. He'll be someone's defensive coordinator come next season. So go ahead and throw it up. That's a touchdown. I'm going to tack on this quick extra point. I really breezed through that very quickly. I feel like I don't want to hold you hostage here on this program when there's not a lot going on. But I feel like. We're going to really get into a lot of what's going on in the National Football League. After I wrap up these lab follow-ups, I want you to stay tuned today as we'll be talking about the Minnesota Vikings, the 23rd team to select in the 2013 NFL Draft in the upcoming spring. And so we'll be getting to some of these free agent moves that will be made in the upcoming offseason as teams are starting to shed dead weight, free up some cap space so that they can make some moves in free agency in the draft. And so we're going to start talking about that at great lengths here shortly. Again, I want to get done with these lap follow-ups, talk about every team's 2012 season, 
and put a bow on that before I start moving into free agency. But that's on the horizon. We'll be finishing up live follow-ups next week. And then we'll be getting into and really knee deep into free agency as that will be here before you know it. Free agency will take place in the second week of March. And so before you know it, free agency will be upon us. And we'll be talking about the free agent frenzy that is the NFL's free agent period. And teams will be calling up players and hosting them at their facilities, trying to woo players into joining their franchise and trying to become a better team in 2013 than they were in 2012. So we'll be talking about that here in the lab room here shortly. But want to finish up these lab follow-ups. And again, stay tuned as we'll be talking about the Minnesota Vikings here in the lab follow-up later on today. So I thank you for joining me here in the program today. Many ways to view the program, many ways to contact the show. There's Facebook. In the Lab Room is the Facebook page. There's Twitter. At In the Lab Room is the Twitter handle. There's the inbox, In the Lab Room, at gmail.com. And there's the YouTube page. Louis T is the page. Subscribe. I thank you for joining me here on the program. Want to see you back here. Same time, same place. And as always, have a good one. Stay tuned for the lab follow-up of the Minnesota Vikings. Want to see you back here tomorrow on the program as well. And want to see you here tomorrow for the lab follow-up as well. Have a good one.